What's up, y'all? This is DJ Oko back again. Um, I wanted to make a part two video to one of my older videos on how to build an analog sound rack. Um, and there's, you know, good reason to build one of those. But this time I want to talk about how to build a digital sound rack. So this bad boy right here I just completed. Um, and I kind of want to walk you guys through it and, you know, point out the differences, the trade-offs between analog and digital. Um, you know, some of the concerns that you might have. So yeah, let's get right into it. So taking a closer look here at the rack, we can see that similar to an analog rack, we have amplifiers here that are all, um, you know, two space um, units, typical sizing or whatever. The main difference between an analog amplifier and a digital amplifier is going to be the weight. So one of these guys on average is weighing something like 8 pounds with an aluminum chassis and uh, what's called a switching power supply. So a switching power supply essentially is um, it doesn't have like one of those big like round toroidal super heavy wire power supplies. It's got some type of digital chip that provides power to the amp um, much more efficiently. So it also draws less power from the wall. Um, you can see here I'm sitting at 122 volts coming out of the wall and all of these amps are on right now. So that that is definitely beneficial. Less power draw from the wall. Um, less weight. So to put it in perspective, if one of these amplifiers is 8 pounds, um, you multiply that times five and that's roughly still less weight than just one analog amplifier usually one amplifier um, from a traditional setup with a solid state uh, power supply is going to be give or take uh, 50 pounds or so so all of these weigh about as much as one amp which is ridiculous it's like so that's obviously the main advantage to them I, I would say they don't they don't have the same kind of punch they're not as punchy but that's okay that's a mild sac sacrifice to make for so much more weight savings um, so that yeah that's the first thing the second thing to think about um, it, besides the amplifiers themselves is what actually makes this digital okay so the digital amplifiers are one but also the mixing console here this mixing console does everything so there's no need for any other pieces of gear. It's very interesting the way it works. Um, most of these type of PA mixers, digital mixers, um, use a computer. So here we have a computer that's receiving a signal from these decks over here. So if I turn it up, you can see the signals playing out here on these channels. And that, that computer browser window lets me control uh, this mixer from anywhere so there's a Wi-Fi antenna here I can use my iPad my iPhone and I can step out into the crowd and then uh, you know do a sound check that way so that's one advantage of this the second advantage um, is that the inputs can do whatever I want them to do they can be line they can be mic they can be high Z they can be whatever um, so there's a lot of a lot more flexibility with a digital amplifier for sure when it comes to inputs um, also you get to play different media sources and I've got a flash drive in the back with a couple mixed mixed tapes in case uh, something goes wrong and we need to have the music continue I can do that here with this mixer but the most important reason why you should use one of these for your DJ setup as opposed to just for mics and for PA is that it gets rid of all the gear that crosses over the sound. And what do I mean by that? Basically, these amplifiers are are powered on their own and they have a basic limiter, but they don't have many other features. They're kind of bone dry. So you you have to feed. So if you if you take a look here on my setup, so like this one's got a subwoofer feed, this one's got a crossover low feed, full range, crossover high, and a monitor. So the way that you accomplish that in the digital rack is by sending out these outputs. So these are aux outputs. And you send those out um, digitally with the frequencies that you want played 
Uh, of course, masters are full range and monitors are full range. And so then, that way you could get your subs, you could get all the frequencies you want being sent out. So, if we play a track here, I'll show you guys what it looks like. So, in the program itself, the signal comes in, and then if we go to aux sends, here in the program, you can see that I've got aux 1, aux 2, aux 3, and aux 4. And each one of those aux auxiliary outputs, if we take a look at the aux level here, we'll select it and then we'll hit the edit button. And what this will do is uh, it'll show me my equalizer where you can see that this channel was only playing out 80 hertz and, and lower. Nothing above that. So that's really important because 80, 80 hertz and below is what a subwoofer signal should be for like a real deep sub. So here we can see this is how you would do it. And then um, if we look at the main mixer board here, um, you can see I have four of those aux sends. So two of them are stereo left and right for my sub. Two of them are stereo left and right for my crossover high which takes away the sub and only plays out highs to get really crispy audio and then of course a full range so that I could get my mids and then the monitor is just the monitor output so that's amazing because this tiny mixer is really flat I'll show you the back so that tiny mixer is so flat that you can see all the empty space back here that it doesn't occupy it weighs nothing and that tiny mixer and computer setup replaces essentially this whole setup here you you would need in an analog setup a crossover device a mixer console and an equalizer if you wanted to accomplish a similar thing except this is still very limited you can do so much more inside this digital rack um, so much more like play out different type of uh, songs you can I can show you what the playhead looks like um, these are the files that I have in there those are the particular mixes that I have set up ready to go um, and so you the, the 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 amount of editing you could do to an equalizer is also pretty amazing like if we go to the master here we hit edit you get an EQ you get a compressor you get effect sends you, so this is this is it's just basically like a DAW workflow, except it's for live use. So this simplifies everything so much more as far as weight and setup and functionality goes. Now, sound-wise, the amplifiers will have a little bit less kick than a traditional heavy solid-state power supply amplifier. Secondly, this particular mixer is a really good one, it's made by Soundcraft. And so a lot of the internal circuitry like the preamps are made by Soundcraft and these are Nutrik connectors. Um, and they use traditional, you know, Lexicon, DBX, Digitech, traditional sound processing modules that are analog and sound really good. Except it uses a digital interface with the computer connected through Wi-Fi and a browser window you can see this is just Google Chrome and you can open up any browser window and open up this web page and control your mixers that's really amazing but you know it is gonna sound drier than say for example an analog mixer or an analog sound maximizer or one of these things so that's for sure you're gonna get a drier sound out of this but uh, you know that may not necessarily be a bad thing sometimes you need precise audio Sometimes you need stuff to sound really, really precise. That's kind of like the difference between mixing on like a zone mixer, like uh, like that guy up there is a zone 42, and that's a full analog mixer. That's a, the difference between mixing on that and a digital Pioneer mixer. You know, some people, it's just a sound preference. Um, but personally, as a work rig, this is superior because it weighs so much more less one person can carry this whole entire box, believe it or not. It's so lightweight. Um, and also, it draws less power. 
and it looks better in my opinion it's, it's easier to manage so yeah for a lot of reasons this setup is better than an analog setup as far as convenience goes and actually as a work hustle type setup I would re I would highly recommend having a digital rack but that doesn't mean that you should get rid of your analog rack if if you are not moving your rack around if you're setting up sound for uh, let's say a venue that where it's, the sound isn't going anywhere this may not be it because you know if it's not going anywhere you may be more inclined to setting up the old school sonic maximizer stuff old school compressors old, all of this old school stuff may work better old school mixers just because you're not moving it the weight doesn't matter and it's heavier it sounds a little bit better in my opinion so yeah anyways another thing that's a little bit important that I forgot to mention is also the case that you choose this case is a really lightweight gator skin composite case thing that is kinda like like a floating setup here it really protects your gear from impact um, and it weighs very little so you know if you're going for a lightweight setup I would recommend getting one of these plastic cases instead instead of the old school anvil case like uh, like these wood metal ones these things are hella heavy but uh, yeah that's that's a thought power distribution on the other hand continues to be analog so you're still gonna need a power conditioner you're still gonna need a switchboard for connecting multiple items and you're gonna need at least two different ones if you're building a rack as big as mine just because you're gonna want to distribute the sound um, across two different breakers if you have so many amps otherwise you're gonna just pop the wall outlet um, so that's another thing to consider yeah the power distribution is still gonna be old school you know but your mixer can be digital and it, your mixer can act as your crossover it can act as your compressor it can act as your limiter it can act as your mixer it can do everything so you only need this one of these guys here and your amps and you're good to go now ideally you know if you're building a rack this big it's because you have a pretty big sound system um, you can see the speakers that that is supposed to power there um, but if you are not building a rack this big what other options do you have that's a great question so here are my other three digital amp setups that I these are three separate systems that I use um, and they're really great so what I have here is my medium setup and what you want for a compact system is see I have the same gator case uh, things here um, these things are great and I keep it the same because they're all stackable I can stack everything together um, but if you get a really lightweight case get yourself another switching power supply amplifier that weighs only you know eight to ten pounds put them in this case but if you're only using two small amps or one small amp I would recommend to go with an amplifier like this that has built-in sound processing um, what does that mean it just means that this amp has a limiter has a compressor has all the features that I'm using on the computer there to cross over the the sound I can do it here you can set up different types of crossovers so you can see I've got this one marked as low for my subs I've got this one marked as high for my tops and this is one system right this is a line array slash 2x12 subwoofer system and this is my large setup this has got a slightly bigger amp this is a 2500 and a 1500 as opposed to a 15 and a thousand this one powers in a set of 18 inch subs and a set of 15 inch tops so this is really loud system right here um, and again it's already crossed over internally it's already got a limiter it's really easy to use great super lightweight all the cables are inside of this back side of the case it can store all the cables I need everything's pre-plugged in only two power cables and it's good to go and then I got the little one um, which you can use in stereo or you can use it how I'm using it and that's you can even go as far as crossing it over half and half so you can use half the amp the left side as your sub you can use the right side as your top this is great I use this for these two little 10 inch tops 
and a little uh, 2x12 sub that I have back there and it works out great so if you needed a 2.1 system this this is a great solution these little digital amps weigh nothing I can tell you now case and all this thing weighs maybe maybe 12 pounds 13 pounds altogether which is amazing real easy to carry great for gigs very versatile you can plug in different speakers you can uh, mix these around plug and play you know you don't always have to use the same speakers with your setup you can stack them together make a big system out of a lot of little systems so this is a great solution if you're not looking to build such a big module like this one here um, yeah so yeah um, tell me what you guys think about about this setup um, I, I you know I'm not a powered speaker kind of guy so I can't say that I that I like powered speakers I, I do have a powered speaker system as well I think this sounds better so you know that's just that's just my personal preference but if you're in the market for building digital racks um, and you wanted to kind of see an overview of someone else's system you know I'm happy to make this happen for you guys so thank you guys for watching peace